This project is an analysis of wetland habitat suitability and invasive species management priorities within the Rodeo Lagoon watershed in the Marin Headlands portion of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. We are Tommy Alexander and Paul Cook, and this research is brought to you by the University of San Francisco Geospatial Analysis Lab. The Rodeo Lagoon watershed is a mosaic of chaparral and grassland, forest, and wetlands that support a diverse range of species. The area is heavily developed for recreational use, and the wetland habitat here faces substantial disturbance, including the invasion of historical plant communities by non-native species. 90% of California's historic wetlands have been lost to development over the past few centuries. Modern restoration efforts are slowing the decline, but wetlands are still particularly susceptible to invasion. Monotypic takeover by non-native plants can significantly alter food webs, nutrient cycling, and habitat quality. It's also common for non-native colonizing species to invade wetland areas even if they're not exclusively adapted to wetland hydrology. Today, the watershed is managed by the National Park Service and local partner organizations. Even though they actively manage and restore wetland habitat, Financial limits on habitat monitoring make it hard to keep a clear picture of how plant communities are changing over time and, in turn, where invasive species management is needed. Thus, we aim to explore the potential of app-based citizen science data as a supplementary survey tool, specifically iNaturalist, an app that uses an image classification algorithm to log geotagged observations of biological taxa. The main objective of our project is to identify priority areas for habitat enhancement and invasive species management in the Rodeo Lagoon watershed. A second related goal is to explore the potential of app-based citizen science data as a tool for monitoring and modeling vegetation communities. To reach these objectives, we ask the following research questions. 1. Where is the most suitable habitat for wetland and riparian species in the Rodeo Lagoon watershed? Two. Based on observational data from iNaturalist, where are native and invasive wetland species most densely concentrated within the study area? And three, does the distribution of iNaturalist observations for native and invasive plant species indicate areas of conflict that may be priorities for invasive species management? First, we counted iNaturalist observations of various wetland adapted plants within the Rodeo Lagoon watershed for the years 2009 through 2019 and classified them as native or invasive. In ArcMap, we used a series of fuzzy membership analyses to model ideal habitat for wetland and riparian plants as a function of distance from creeks, wetlands, hydric soils, and previously mapped wetland vegetation. We layered these models to form a fuzzy overlay raster representing habitat suitability for hydrophytic plant species. This provided crucial context for the iNaturalist data. Then, we used the ArcMap kernel density tool to interpolate the point data for native and invasive observations in order to identify the areas where each category was most highly concentrated. We then combined these interpolations using the fuzzy overlay tool to model areas of overlap between native and non-native wetland species. Our habitat suitability analysis reveals a significant spatial overlap between the habitat qualities preferred by wetland species. This fuzzy overlay map represents the most suitable areas for wetland and riparian plants within the Rodeo Lagoon watershed, with most preferred areas in dark blue. Our individual kernel density analysis for native and invasive plant observations reveal where each group is most densely concentrated. Although there's a greater overall observed abundance of native species, there are distinct places where these data sets overlap. Our final kernel density analysis indicates multiple areas of conflict between native and invasive wetland species in the Rodeo Lagoon watershed. The overlap is heaviest in the vicinity of the Rodeo Lagoon, but is also concentrated in upstream riparian zones. Habitat managers might consider prioritizing these high conflict areas for invasive species management. We conclude that while crowdsourced vegetation monitoring can reveal useful information, the precision of this data is seriously limited by spatiotemporal gaps and observer bias. However, iNaturalist data may still be useful under the right circumstances. We suggest that providing agency guidance for iNaturalist plant observations in watershed could help develop a more robust data set to be used as a cost-effective supplemental monitoring method 
for real-time trends in plant distribution. Finally, we'd like to acknowledge the individuals and organizations who made this report possible. Thank you to the California Academy of Sciences iNaturalist team, the member agencies of the Marin Map Project, and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife for serving as crucial data sources. Thank you to Megan Danielson, Fernanda Lopez Ornelas, and David Sa for guidance in completing this project for the USF Accelerated Intermediate GIS course. Thank you. <laughs>